This podcast is brought to you by GoMoto, the service lane kiosk that grows your business. Want to increase revenue, improve the customer experience, and maximize service efficiency? Visit GoMoto.com to learn more. G-O-M-O-T-O dot com. Want to dive deeper into the topics you hear about on Daily Drive? We're offering listeners a special offer, 20% off a one-year Automotive News digital subscription. That gets you access to all of our news, information, and analysis made for automotive industry leaders like you. Go to autonews.com slash daily drive promo to redeem. Welcome to Daily Drive for Wednesday, November 22nd, 2023. I'm Jamie Butters, Executive Editor of Automotive News in Detroit. And I'm Kellen Walker in Las Vegas. Today on the show, Toyota Chairman Akio Toyota retires as Japan's auto industry leader. Ford cuts the size of its Michigan EV battery factory. And a judge rules that Elon Musk knew about Tesla's autopilot defect. Plus, Hyundai Global COO Jose Munoz joins the show to talk about the automaker's groundbreaking deal to sell its vehicles on Amazon. We don't see this as an online sales thing. We see it as a big strategic partnership that could grow in the future. Let's run through all the news you need to know to keep up in the auto industry. Akio Toyota is retiring as chairman of the Japan Automobile Manufacturers Association. His decision comes after an unprecedented three terms leading one of the world's biggest, most vibrant automotive industries through a turbulent decade of dramatic and rapid change. Earlier this year, Toyota also stepped down as CEO of Toyota Motor Corporation and was succeeded by Koji Sato. Isuzu Motors chairman Masanori Katayama will take over as chairman of JAMA. Katayama's appointment is the first time JAMA's top job will be filled by the boss of a truck maker since the industry group's founding in 1967. The chairmanship of JAMA usually rotates every two years between Japan's three biggest car makers, Toyota, Honda, and Nissan. Ford says it will restart construction on the electric vehicle battery plant it halted in Marshall, Michigan two months ago, but the plant will be substantially smaller than originally planned. The project is expected to create 1,700 jobs. That's 32% less than the 2,500 it previously announced. Ford is slashing the planned capacity of the lithium iron phosphate battery plant by more than 40% to just 20 gigawatt hours. A Ford spokesperson said the total investment in the plant will likely be reduced by the same measure, from $3.5 billion to roughly $2.2 billion. China's CATL is considering a second listing in Hong Kong. That's according to people familiar with the matter who spoke with Bloomberg News. One of the sources said the world's biggest EV battery maker put a plan to sell global depository receipts in Switzerland on hold, which could help set up a possible share sale. The people said it's too early to tell the size of the fundraising of the Hong Kong listing. They said the decision-making process is at an early stage. International Financing Review, which covers global markets, reported today that a CATL share sale could take place as soon as early next year. A representative for CATL didn't respond to requests for comment. A Florida judge found reasonable evidence that Tesla CEO Elon Musk and other managers knew the automaker's vehicles had a defective autopilot system, but still allowed the cars to be driven unsafely. Judge Reed Scott ruled last week in the Circuit Court of Palm Beach County that the plaintiff in a lawsuit over a fatal crash could proceed to trial and bring punitive damage claims against Tesla for intentional misconduct and gross negligence. The ruling is a setback for Tesla after the company won two product liability trials in California earlier this year over the autopilot driver assistance system. A Tesla spokesperson could not immediately be reached for comment on Tuesday. And the parent of Forbes magazine and its related website is no longer going forward with a sale to automotive technology magnate Austin Russell. The seller is Hong Kong-based Integrated Whale Media Investments. The company terminated the agreement with Russell, who couldn't close the deal. That's according to an internal memo from Forbes CEO Mike Federley. The sale was paused for two weeks after missing a November 1st deadline. Russell is the CEO of Luminar Technologies. He announced in May that he was acquiring an 82% stake in Forbes Global Media Holdings. The deal valued the business at $800 million dollars. 
Axios reports that's far more than previous valuations of the company, including one to take the company public that was valued at $620 million. And those are today's headlines. Jamie, Akio Toyota is retiring from the Japan Automobile Manufacturers Association. Over the years, what was his biggest impact? You know, I'd say this most recent term has to be his most consequential. You know, for one thing, he stepped in, you know, out of order. He came in, you know, back into office sooner than he normally would have, in part because of some of the chaos at Nissan in the wake of Carlos Ghosn's departure. Uh, But more importantly, you know, he's really become a leading figure in arguing for carbon reduction in ways other than making and selling EVs. In fact, he has argued that that is really a less effective, less efficient way to reduce carbon and slow global warming. It's not a popular position. Uh, Most other Japanese automakers kind of take the same view. In a sense, so does Hyundai, uh, which is seen as a leader on EVs. But he's really articulated the argument against EVs, not against EVs, but against totally relying on EVs, especially in light of the limited availability of processed, you know, lithium and cobalt and those other minerals, you know, in this short period of time. Very interesting era. Gotcha. Coming up, Hyundai Global COO Jose Munoz talks about his company's landmark deal with Amazon to sell its vehicles online. That's next on Daily Drive. The auto industry's shift to carbon neutrality is here and it's accelerating. But is it enough? This is a moral imperative, an economic imperative, a moment of peril, but also a moment of extraordinary possibilities. No more hesitancy, no more excuses, no more waiting for the others to move first. There is simply no more time for that. Driving to Zero is a new podcast series from Automotive News that looks at the auto industry's roadmap to carbon neutrality. We take a big picture look at the environmental, political, and social trends pushing the move toward a greener future. And we pull back the curtain on how these decisions are being made at the highest levels. I said, you know, the, the headline that you need is, is GM believes in an all electric future. And I think Dan Ammon and Mary Barra pretty much said the same thing, which is, is like, but, but we, we don't. Spoiler alert, they came around to that idea. Find out how and much more. I'm Jake Neer. Join me and Automotive News Executive Editor Jamie Butters on Driving to Zero. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. Your service check-in process sets the tone for your customer's entire visit. Do your customers wait longer than five minutes to check in for service? Are your advisors presenting upsells to every customer every time? How often is the opportunity for a trade appraisal missed? When your service drive gets busy, these inefficiencies directly impact revenue. Give your customers the option to handle the entire check-in process themselves, from appointment scheduling through final confirmation in under two minutes. Customers have the experience they want while selling themselves, which means your advisors are freed up to focus on profit-producing activities. It's a win-win for CSI and your revenue. Introducing a smarter service lean, GoMoto is the self-service kiosk designed to grow your business. If you're ready to start increasing revenue, improving the customer experience, and maximizing service efficiency today, visit GoMoto.com. That's G-O-M-O-T-O dot com. Welcome back to Daily Drive. I'm Jamie Butters with Kellen Walker. Hyundai will start selling its lineup of vehicles on Amazon early next year. It's a major development in the saga of online vehicle sales. Amazon is the world's largest online retailer with about $1.4 billion in sales every day. Hyundai's involvement is also novel in that it's an automaker with hundreds of dealers in the U.S., It says dealers will play a pivotal role in all of its U.S. transactions. I spoke with Hyundai Global COO Jose Munoz last week at the Los Angeles Auto Show, where the companies announced the partnership. I want to know more about this deal with Amazon. Okay, well, first, let me start by saying that uh, we started this uh, in 2018. Uh, At that time, we were just thinking, how can we learn from the leader in um, uh, digital sales. And then we started a partnership where basically we allowed our customers to shop in Amazon. 
shop uh, would allow only at the time to get some products uh, displayed and uh, do some car configuration, etc. Something very basic. Mm -hmm. This has been a, a great opportunity to uh, strengthen the relationships between both corporations, get to know each other better, and then uh, look for uh, all the synergies and opportunities. So we're very happy to announce today this uh, strategic partnership, which is comprised of uh, three uh, great pillars. Mm -hmm. Pillar number one is the online sales, which is uh, an end-to-end -end solution, which is aimed at uh, providing to the consumer a better shopping experience. We've learned through the pandemic how the consumers were expecting to uh, have similar experience when buying a car than when they buy something else online. Mm -hmm. And that was not the reality, despite the many players and the many tools, etc., etc. So uh, then we uh, decided to work together with Amazon. And Amazon was uh, also looking into the car sales uh, as one of the future opportunities. And I think we saw uh, a win-win solution, right? So they are, without a doubt, the number one uh, online sales. They have 250 million customers a day, and <laughs> they have 150 million uh, prime customers. And then uh, we are the third global uh, OEM. We are vertically integrated. So we have a lot of capabilities that other competitors don't have, like we do our own ISIT, we do our own our own logistics, and then as a as a group of companies, we have so many interest uh, interested uh, entities in a potential collaboration that we decided to develop them together. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, step one or pillar number one: online sales end to end. We're going to start uh, in Q1 uh, with a pilot, 15 to 20 dealers mm -hmm. in the United States with the Hyundai brand. Uh, and then with the intention to roll it out uh, to the entire network of dealers who would be willing mm -hmm. to join the project in the second half. So um, uh, our intention is that uh, not only we can do the shopping, but we can all also do the financing. Mm -hmm. And then eventually we can do also a certified pre-owned and mm -hmm. uh, not only Hyundai and uh, Ionic, but also Genesis at some point. So step by step. I think uh, second pillar, which is very important, is the uh, Alexa integration into our products. So as of 2025. So our cars are also uh, bringing te technology uh, to do voice recognition, uh, etc. But we found out that the Americans like Alexa better. They are used to it. And then uh, what if we had this technology into our vehicles and then you could connect uh, your vehicle to your smart device and also to your home mm -hmm. and do the things that normally you do at home uh, from your car if you wanted to, right? And this is uh, all about Alexa. I'm very happy that this uh, was part of the project. The third pillar is more related to infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Our company is right now working in the digital transformation and then is uh, trying to um, migrate from kind of in-house uh, development to cloud uh, first uh, technology uh, and strategy. And then uh, uh, Amazon Web Services, AWS, offers you the, the possibility to do all your digital transformation, all your operations, the data storage, and then uh, all, all the uh, disaster recovery activities into their platform for the different entities uh, that we have and the different needs that we have. So we don't see this as an online sales thing. We see it as a big strategic partnership that could grow in the future. Right. But it's the online sales piece that really is such a game changer, right? At least for the rest of the world. Maybe AWS is a game changer for you internally. One of the things I was curious about was, uh, you know, can it go to, can it expand to used vehicles? And you just mentioned yep. CPO. CPO probably is easier to fit than having dealers list all of their used inventory on Amazon just because it's more standardized? Well, you can do both. Actually, the important element to highlight here is that the sale is actually uh, executed by the dealer. Mm -hmm. So the shopping process is done at Amazon, but the delivery of the unit and the actual sale is done by the dealer. Uh, so the consumer gets access to the uh, available inventory at the dealer, can choose the dealer that he wants to buy from, 
and then where, depending on the location, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, and the actual sale is done by the dealer. So the dealer doesn't have to pay a commission to Amazon or to us as well. So it's just one additional sales channel for the dealer. So is the is it a no haggle price, and who sets the price? The dealer sets their own price. So we uh, only recommend we have the MSRP. Mm-hmm. And we issue to the dealers the incentives uh, and the programs, but then the dealer decide the price that they want to post on the inventory they want to make available for Amazon. So the 15 to 20 dealers, they can all set their own price and yep. they kind of compete it out within the Amazon market space. Yep, basically, yes. And then the consumer decides whichever dealer they want to buy from it's not geographically geo the consumer can can choose uh, by product or by location yeah okay as the basically it's an online online experience and then the dealers that uh, want they can deliver the unit to the consumer or the consumer go to the dealership to uh, pick up the, the car mm-hmm. trade-ins how are trade-ins handled do you just have to go to the dealer directly and work it out with them Trading is included in the Amazon experience okay. when it will be live, mm-hmm. and also the um, hand capital, so mm-hmm. financing, also included. So yeah, when somebody the, piece, the pieces are not together, yeah, and then we're gonna start uh, step by step with our own bank with hand capital, and maybe step by step other uh, institutions okay. uh, can be added as well. That was something I was very curious about. Yeah, where the who does the financing is certainly more probably more efficient when you're able to do it yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. This is the the low hanging fruit. Mm-hmm. This is the first step. How does Amazon make money then on this? I mean, other than the AWS uh, and the I've been, I've been in all the meetings uh, with the, uh, <laughs> the Marty, who is the one who was with me at the stage, say, hey. We have different ways to make money, different different things, and uh, I'm not going to tell you. We haven't figured it out yet, so I'm not going to uh, give it to you. But basically, it's not making money out of the deal, and it's not pay, it's not uh, getting a commission from the dealer. So hmm. they have different ways to make money. I guess uh, maybe this is the initial phase, or maybe it's an exploration, mm-hmm. or they see benefits. If you if you bring uh, millions of consumers who are buying cars, I guess they not only buy cars, right? They may buy uh, other things as well. Yeah. So they have their own way. So I didn't see them worried about it. Sometimes, I mean, I think there's a sense in industries, you know, Amazon comes in and they offer a great deal. They lose money on products when they first start selling them and then they gain a certain amount of power over the market and can really change the game. Uh, you are not worried about them doing that to you or to the auto industry. I, I'm not worried. I see it actually as uh, we're getting access to 250 million a day. Shoppers, very mm-hmm. simple, right? <laughs> so interesting thing is uh, the dealers have had an overwhelming positive reaction. Mm. It's and it's volunteer, by the way. So mm-hmm. uh, you don't want to be part of this, uh, you are not. So it's it's up up to you. We open to everybody, and then we immediately got the uh, unsolicited volunteers uh, mm-hmm. to be pilot because uh, being the first mover gives us the advantage to to have positive. A reaction in the market, but also we are the ones developing together with Amazon the technology for this platform. So our dealers, in a way, benefit from that as well. Don't you think all of your dealers will sign up, or do you think I there think, will be a few that will hold I out? I think or? they will all sign up. Yeah. When when we started this uh, kind of uh, testing phase back in 2018, uh, when we explained how it worked, uh, they all sign up. And the point again is not, uh, hey, do, do you want to do it or not? This is when. Are you going to do it? Because uh, (laughs) they are going to do it with or without us. So if you are brand number four, number five, you will have to sign uh, anyway. So now you have the opportunity to pioneer, to experience, to pilot, to learn, and to uh, make the most out of this, right? Jose Munoz is global COO for Hyundai Motor Company. I spoke with him at the Los Angeles Auto Show. That's Daily Drive for today. I'm Jamie Butters. And I'm Kellen Walker. Thanks to Automotive News Coordinating Producer Jake Neer, as well as our own Rudy Shork and Hans Greimel for their reporting for today's podcast. We also had reporting from Kurt Nagel of our sibling publication, Crane's Detroit Business. You can get the latest news on online vehicle sales, battery plants, and everything happening in the auto industry at autonews.com. We'll be off for the Thanksgiving holiday here in the U.S. until Monday, November 27th, 
Come back that day for a conversation with Unifor President Lana Payne about the union's record contracts with the Detroit Three. If you enjoy the podcast, remember to like, leave a review, and subscribe so you never miss an episode.